Before we continue this story, make sure to check out the first part. I'll attach the links in the description and at the end of the video as well. So make sure to check that out before you listen to this part. Trust me, it gets even crazier. Hello and welcome back. This is the second part. I finally had some time to be able to go ahead and write down the rest of them. I'm going to pick up exactly where I left off. The day after I woke up from having the insane dreams, I woke up to scratches on my shoulder. I couldn't really do anything about it, so I just let it fade, like all of my memories. Some months passed, and I didn't share the past experience to a lot of people, only my close ones. A friend of mine and of my brother's came from a different state for a vacation. Since he wanted to visit Six Flags, we live close, so he stayed in the house for about three days. So we left early, since we had some hours of a trip ahead of us, and I was driving. Since it was dark, one of my cousins started telling paranormal experiences. After some of the stories were told, this friend who regularly is very chill was very quiet about the subject, and suddenly he took the word and said he had something to discuss. He told us that during the second night in the house, he woke up in the middle of the night, looking at the couch that he was sleeping on. He rolled back and saw my grandmother sitting in her chair. By that time, my grandmother had an accident and she broke her spine, so she couldn't walk and we had gotten her a special couch. Also, she had advanced Alzheimer's, so it was rare when she talked. And she was looking at him, but he described as a hateful stare. Her eyes were almost popping from her head. And she started to insult him, wishing death for him, telling how miserable he was. And during the insults, she got up from the chair. He told us that this action from her was very disturbing. As she was just walking towards him in an unnatural way. Her legs were straight and walking but from her waist to top, the inclination angle was almost a 45 degree angle. Her arms were trying to point into his direction as she continued to curse at him. And after some moments, he woke up, looking at the couch. He was confused and looked behind him, only to encounter that a lot of the family members were standing next to the couch, surrounding it. He recalls my father my mother, some brothers, uncles, my grandmother, and myself being there with horrible facial expressions. Before he was able to say something, all the people standing next to him shouted, You don't belong here. You are going to die. Leave this house. And started punching him all over. And he remembers the pain. He could feel the punches all over his body until he woke up again looking at the couch. This time scared, he looked to his back and there was my grandmother in her chair, smiling to him, but with a very forced smile. And he described that the moment as if time suddenly stopped. No movement from anybody. No sounds. She was frozen still. And then, she wasn't there anymore. Instead, there was a creepy creature sitting in the chair with that same smile. He remembers a black humanoid figure with a tail coming up between his legs, red eyes looking at him. He told us that the change was instantly. One moment it was my grandmother, and the other, it was this thing. He stayed frozen, trying not to move, but in an instant... The creature jumped from the chair, crawling towards him, grabbed his leg, and dragged him until reaching my room. The door opened and the creature tossed my friend inside, and then the door closed behind him. He screamed in the room, in the dark until he woke up, looking at the couch, but this time he was really awake. My cousin, who was aware of my story, and me looked at each other in shock. 
I proceeded to tell my experience, and when we preferred to change the subject, we never talked about it again. After these events, my experiences remained a normal, casually hearing movements in the room, some sleeping paralysis moments, but the major interactions were changed to another family member in the house, my grandmother. As I was mentioning before, my grandmother had Alzheimer's and couldn't walk. Since I started working after finishing college, and my mother was also working, our family got a pair of nurses to take care of her when we were out. Then, since she began to require more detailed help, the nurses began to sleep in the house in my grandmother's bedroom with her, working 24 hours in turns. One day I was watching TV when one of the nurses asked me if I had experienced something paranormal in the house. I had asked her what had happened to her, and she told me that in several occasions during the night, they would wake up hearing voices in the room, and that my grandmother would be speaking with them clearly. This was odd because of the Alzheimer's. They just tried to figure out what they were saying since my grandmother was whispering to the voices. But every time they moved, the voices disappeared, and after looking at my grandmother, she always had her eyes wide open, not saying a single word. During several days that I was sitting with her, she seemed that she was just staring in a specific point in the room. One day I decided to ask her what she was looking at, and she pointed in the room, and then she started to follow something with her finger. And I surely believe I felt something small pass next to me at the same time as her pointing at my direction. One day, one of the nurses had told me that the past night was the most intense experience that they encountered in the house, leading her to refuse to continue the job. She told me at the beginning that it had started with the same voices and whispering all over the room. She tried to ignore it, but a strange negative feeling was starting to become evident. When she looked in the direction of my grandmother's bed, she noticed how my grandmother was sitting in the bed. But in front of her was a big black creature, also sighted, looking at her, face to face. This thing had its hand resting on her chest. The nurse described it as a humanoid black creature. Its hand and arm very thin almost skeletal, and they were talking in between them, whispering. That scene shocked the nurse, and she rushed to turn on the light. After turning it on, the creature was gone, but my grandmother was awake. The nurse asked her if she remembered anything that had just happened, but my grandmother just repeated how she was feeling a pain in her chest as a red mark started to appear. The nurses gave up the job days later. We hired a new pair of nurses sometime after, and they reported also hearing voices in the room. But they were now worried about it. They focused on her care. One afternoon, there was a small family reunion in the house, and my grandmother was in her bedroom, at the bed since it was late. Then, we heard a lot of noise coming from her room. We rushed to see what was happening, only to find my grandmother in the opposite corner of the room, towards her bed. She was on the floor crying and injured. We asked how that happened to her, and she told us something grabbed her and pushed strongly out of the bed. We were worried and confused, since there was no way that she could get out of that bed and be on that side of the room. She was scared of something she didn't understand. She was only repeating one thing. Something pushed her out of the bed. It became more common that bruises appeared on her body. Her health decreased in a major way, and it required our full attention and comfort until that day. She died in the room during the morning. My mother was with her when it happened. And since that day, the house became a little calmer. 
the feeling of being observed, the negative presence, have been gone. The scratches disappeared. Now that I only live with my mother, we think that we don't really have to worry about it. At last, from time to time, I heard activity in my grandmother's room. Rooms opening, furniture moving sounds. Even one day, I was taking a bath when I heard footsteps approaching the bathroom. I immediately recognized those footsteps. They were my grandmother's high heels. As I remembered when I was younger, I didn't feel fear. On the contrary, I was happy to know that she is here, and I like to think she is watching over us. Now, I don't believe that we are 100% free of any kind of negative presence. Maybe they are still there, waiting for someone new. They appear to focus on one person at a time. The other night, not so long ago, I took my new girlfriend to my house. We entered the room on the second floor, and she waited for me for a while, because I was bringing some snacks. When I returned to the room, she was standing still, looking at a painting on the wall. I asked her what happened, and she told me that during the time I was looking for the snacks, the painting started to move from left to right, each time more quicker than the last. She didn't know what to do, but just watch. At the same time I opened the door, the painting stopped in its original position. She asked me to leave that room for that night. I didn't watch the painting moving, and I looked for air entries, but there wasn't any. I do believe her. If there was some new remarkable event in the house, I will post updates. Thank you for reading. And there you have it. That is the final upload. I'm waiting to get into contact with the same person to find out if there are any updates. So far there aren't any, and they still continue to live in the same house. They said that there are faint little things that happen, like bumps in the night, different noises, furniture moving, but that's all right now. Hopefully it stays that way for them. So before you leave this video, Make sure to check out part one of the series. Trust me, you'll like the last. Thanks for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you show me some love with a like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoyed this. If you want more like these, make sure to comment in the comment section. Make sure to check out my links in the description. My Twitter, Instagram, my Gmail if you want to submit a story. Make sure to check those out. I would very much appreciate it. I've got a lot more content coming, so hope you're ready for that. And also, if you haven't already voted on the poll, make sure to vote on it. But with that being said, stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one.